Welcome back to the Michael Mar Show. Today is Friday, April 16, 2021. This is episode 51. And today I'm joined by professional boxer, undefeated professional boxer, Floyd Kid Austin Schofield. He's 4-0 with four knockouts, and he'll be fighting on May 8, 2021 in Orlando, Florida. Man, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for making some time for me, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. You said you, uh, you're about to jump into training in a couple of hours? Yep. Gonna go do some strength and conditioning, and then probably box later on tonight. You sparring tonight? Nah, I don't get sparring in Texas. <laughs> really? Where do you have to go to yeah. usually get some good sparring? I usually gotta go like out of out of state, usually California or you know, probably Philly or someplace like that. But Texas is very hard to find sparring. Uh, first boxing question that I got for you is: uh, At what age did you realize that you'd have a, a career in boxing? That this was for you? Uh, I'd say about four, maybe. But I started training at two. But at four is when I really made the decision to, like, you know, make this my lifelong, you know, passion and career. So i say about the age of four is when I really fell in love with boxing. And you've just been training nonstop ever since? Nonstop. Never did any other sports and, you know, never took any breaks off. So... Man. When did you when, when did you have your first amateur fight? I believe at the age of seven, seven, about to turn eight. Uh, man, I was, I was so nervous to have that fight. But I got the win, and, you know, that just made me more confident in my abilities. Yeah. How many amateur fights have you had before you turned pro? Well over 180. Damn. So you'd just be pumping them out. Like, Would you, would you have sometimes, like, multiple fights within a week? I can't remember, but I would say there's a good chance I did have, like, uh, you know, probably, like, a fight, uh, like, on Saturday, then I'll fight again the next Saturday. But in, in tournaments, yeah, they make you fight every day, depending on um, how long the tournament's going to be. So I have fought, like, four days in a row before. Damn, man. Do you have to pass, like, certain tests, like, by the doctors in between fights to make sure you're good to go for the next one? Yeah, um, you, well, as an amateur, not really. You just get, like, checked up while you're at the at the tournament, and all they do is, like, check your heartbeat, feel your hands, see if you can do a squat, and then, you know, you're, you're good to fight. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, another question I got for you, and you actually kind of alluded to it a couple minutes ago. How do you yeah. handle the pressure and your emotions before a fight, especially now that you're professional and uh, there's a lot more, like, at risk and on the line? Um, you know, I just have my, like, my, my friends around or like, you know, me and my dad will be joking, you know, to ease off some steam or, you know, it all comes from like weeks before of training. I mean, uh, before the fight, cause you know, you have mental preparation to do, you know, meditation and, you know, all you have to do is know the hard work that you put in. And if you gave 150%, then, you know, nothing's going to go wrong in that ring. That's your fight. So that's how I look at it. Cause you know, I'm disciplined and, you know, I train hard and I know my abilities. So I know this other guy isn't going to beat me. So, you know, I don't get nervous really anymore. But as of the amateurs, you know, um, it's all you just have to relax. Just relax and know that yeah. everything's going to be okay. Win or lose. So how do you say meditation? You take that pretty seriously? Like meditation and yoga and stuff like that? I'm still working on the seriously part. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, I do do it because, you know, that's a part of the game. And I'm going to start getting into yoga uh, pretty soon, but not anytime soon. So. Yeah. yeah, that stuff's great for you. I mean, I haven't done it in years, but I played Art. sports in high school. And, I, I mean, you're just, like, so at peace. Like, when you get out of, the like, a yoga session and everything, like, you're just ready to rock with yeah. whatever. Yeah, I heard it increases your speed, too, in boxing. So that's why I really wanted to try it. So. Yeah. You have any, like, um, pre-fight rituals that, like, you always have to do before a fight? Or is it, like – Every fight's different. Um, I feel it's the same thing. You know, usually I'll, or you can say it's different. I'll either listen to music, you know, play video games or, you know, just study some boxing or, you know, just either be to myself and, you know, just not talk and just think about the fight. Yeah. So it, it, it just depends on, you know, how I'm feeling really. Yeah. What, what uh, artists do you like to listen to before you fight? 
or just in general, like before training, just kicking it back at the crib? Um, sorry, everybody keeps calling my phone now that I'm on an interview. No, you're good, man. Um, I'll probably say pop smoke or it, it varies because like I'm not a rap. You know, I don't really, really listen to rap like that. Mm-hmm. But most of the time when I'm training or sometimes before I fight, my choice of music is probably R&B. So I'd probably pick like that's a know, vibe, Bryson man. Taylor, Chris Brown. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it helps me get in like a um, people say, why do you listen to that? Don't you need to be amped up? But like, that's true. But you also need to be like calm and relaxed. And that just slows me down. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see where you're coming from with that. All right. Uh, another uh, box related question is uh, which big name fighter would you like to fight in the coming years? So like, let's say two, three, four years down the line. Who, who is someone yeah. you'd love to step in the ring with? All the champions, you know, all the champions in my weight division, really. Sure. Yeah. Cause I don't, I, I don't want to fight you if you don't have a belt. So like, if I'm not getting any, you know, any like really big credit for fighting you, then there's no point on me even trying to step in the ring with you. I just want the best and the people that's, you know, above me in my weight division. So a big name right now, I would say I want to fight is probably Javante Davis, Devin Haney, uh, you know, Shakur even sooner or later. Yeah. So it just it just varies, you know, just depending there's who has some big name boxers, man. I mean, I love watching them, and I would love to absolutely see you yeah. compete against them one day. But uh, what yes. about those uh, like Devin Haney and uh, Javante Davis? Like, what about their style, uh, like intrigues you, like that you think you'd be able um, to expose them? I can't give too many secrets now. Yeah, no, I obviously. Can say, I can say that at the end of the day, I've been working. Um, you know, just as hard as them, have just as many years under my belt as, of experience. I train hard, you know, I dedicate my life to this sport. And I probably want the titles more than they do. You know, I feel like I'm doing it for a legacy and, you know, not just for the money. This is actually my passion where, therefore, I feel like sometimes fighters can get comfortable and think they're too good. Like, they might as well just do it for the money. So I know it's just love for the sport and that I'm just going to get love back from the sport. So I feel like um, boxing is going to give me what I give it, basically. Yeah, I love that attitude, man. That You're not chasing money. You're just chasing, yeah. like you said, legacy and just memories, highlights, and just like yeah. – that's – I mean, because there, there's a lot of people nowadays that all they care about is the easiest fight that makes them the most money and not really challenging yourself. And to hear you say yep. that you're challenging yourself, like boxing needs more fighters with that type of mindset that are just willing to push themselves. Mm-hmm. I agree. So um, another question that kind of ties into that is what is one city or arena that you would love to compete in one day? UT Stadium, you know, University of Texas. Yeah. I, like ever since I moved here, it was my dream. Like first time, you know, I would run the stadium with uh, one of the gym owners and I would just see how big it was and see all the seats. And now that I see that they're just making it even bigger, you know, improving on the, on the, um, you know, for as many people who can be in the arena, it's just like, wow, this would be a nice, a nice place to fight in. Cause you know, they don't have boxing fights in Austin, Texas anymore. Yeah. So it'd be nice to have a, a big main event here where celebrities could come out and, you know, fans can meet their, like fans can meet me and their favorite celebrities. So I feel like that'd be good. Yeah. And that'd be a massive crowd. I mean, that would yeah. be- be a huge crowd. Now, where have you fought so far? I mean, you're fighting in Orlando on May 8th, but since you can tie your amateur career into it or your professional career so far? Um, I fought uh, all over, really. Um, but as professional, I fought Florida, uh, Atlanta, and Mexico. I feel like Mexico was... was Mexico. Uh, yeah, that was my first time going out of the country, and I think that tops it off on all places I've been between amateur and pro because, you know, Mexico was, like, different. It was, like, seeing a different world and, you yeah. know, different culture. And it was it was pretty cool. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like – you could say some parts are kind of like California. They kind of look the same. You know, you yeah. see Costco and McDonald's and stuff. <laughs> Costco. So, so it, was, it was pretty cool. You know, the food was good. And, like, we had a 
a great Italian restaurant out there. And I'm like, they have Italian food in Mexico? That's crazy. <laughs> Did you go to it? So, yeah, I went. I ate, I ate pasta after the weigh-ins, and it, it was pretty good. It's probably the best pasta I've ever had. Damn. All right, high praise yeah. for it then. Is that what you usually yeah. try to eat after weigh-ins? Is you just, like, eat some carbs and get ready for the next day? Yeah, my dad, he always wants me to, you know, stay carved up after the weigh-ins, you know, get my water back and um, you know, make sure I'm ready for the fight next day. But after the fight is when I really go crazy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. For my listeners and watchers that don't know uh, what weight class you compete in, why don't you tell everyone what weight you compete in and how much you have to cut to make that, that weight class? You um, I could, how much you got cut. Yeah, I, I compete <laughs> in 130, but, you know, Pops don't want me to give away that classified information. Yeah, no problem. Of how much we cut. But, yeah, I'm a, I'm a very big dude, you know. Yeah. When how I tall fight, are you? 5'8". Five, 5'8". Eight. Five, eight. All right, yeah, so fighting down yeah. at 130, I could soon to be Soon to be six foot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're still growing. I mean, you're only 18 or 19, right? 18. Yeah, so you definitely got a couple more years of growing in you, bro. Yeah. So what do you see yourself, like, a couple years down the line, obviously progressing up weight classes, but what do you see, like, as um, a weight class that you would stay at for the, for the majority of your career? A weight class I could stay at. Like, majority of your career. Are you going four different divisions? Yeah, it's probably going to be my last division that I'm in, really. Mm-hmm. Um, like 160. Yeah, 160, because that's going to probably take a while to collect those belts from everybody. Yeah. So um, that's probably the longest I see myself at, really. It just all depends on, you know, how long it takes to become undisputed in those weight classes. And how yeah. big you get. Yeah, and how big I get. Because for all I know, I could turn out to be six foot tomorrow and got to move up to light heavyweight. Yeah. You wish you. <laughs> wish it can happen. Yeah. Now, um, what are your thoughts on – celebrity boxing fights i mean i know you said you're you're more into challenges and uh not necessarily money fights but what do you think about like youtube boxing i mean we got ben Askren versus uh jake paul tomorrow night uh what, what are you what are your thoughts on celebrity boxing no, no. I, mean, making money. I, ain't, I ain't gonna be mad at mad at them because you know it's just bringing attention to boxing it's bringing their fans to boxing and you know go get your money so but i just feel like if you're gonna box take it serious because at the end of the day you don't want to lose your life in there thinking that boxing is a game because, you know, you, even though you're just going in to get a paycheck and some fame, um, it's still a dangerous sport at the end of the day and you can lose your life at any moment. Right? Yeah, 100 percent, man. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, some you can obviously tell some from some of the celebrity box fights that have been put on so far that these guys don't take it seriously. And uh, you can tell that from when they step in the ring and everything. So I agree. They definitely should take it seriously because it's a, it's a dangerous sport besides boxing. Um, like if, if it wasn't boxing. Nothing really. I mean, I like I like the look of football, but me actually finishing the call. doing it. I don't see myself. And my dad was like, no, nah, you're not doing the football. That's too dangerous. So it's a little... Um, I could say football was the only sport I really liked, but now, you know, I play basketball, you know, at LA Fitness, who put my friends, I'm pretty decent at basketball, so, um, that just, uh, were the only two I was really looking at, and, you know, I can't go out and play some football now, because that's too much of a risk, yeah. so, I say yeah. basketball and football. You, uh, you watch professional sports, like, you watch NBA and NFL? Uh-uh. Not but I, I play, I play the games, so that's crazy. I play the games, and know everything, every player on the team from the game. But I know nothing about, you know, the NBA or, you know, yeah. Madden or. NFL. You play Xbox. PlayStation. Are you PlayStation? I was gonna say I gotta get your game attack after this. I'm getting, I'm getting a PC uh, next week though, so. Oh, that's I'll be able to cross play probably. Yeah, then we'll definitely gotta run together at some point. But um, what what other games do you like to play, besides Madden and Two K? Um, see, I'm super big on 2K. All I do is, like, for, like, if I if I have an off day, I'm just on 2K, like, all day. But I'll probably play some Modern Warfare. I really like Modern Warfare. Uh, I don't play Fortnite anymore. I haven't played that in years. Um, I had a great run, though. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, definitely. I, if I'm not playing 2K, that's what I'm playing. Um, yeah. I know the only video games I really play. 
I just got back into GTA like a couple weeks ago. Like me and my friends at school, we downloaded it onto the Xbox and like yeah. game shared it. And we've just been ripping it apart, dude. Like we'll be up at like three in the morning playing GTA online. See, I, that can't be me. I need my sleep. Yeah. Is, are, are you pretty uh, like strict with your, with your uh, sleeping and eating schedule? Can't say that in front of my dad. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, am I sleeping? Yeah, because I really like to sleep. When I'm eating, when I'm not about to fight, no. But when I'm, you know, when I got to start cutting weight and my dad wants me to get down and wait, and I got to get serious. Mm-hmm. But, you know, my dad lets me, you know, have my moments. You know, if I have a good train, hard training session and I cut like, say, a pound and a half or two pounds or, you know, just a hard training session. You know, he'll reward me with like a good lunch or, you know, a snack or something like that. So, because yeah. I'm always strict on myself. Like, I'm always like, no, I got to starve myself. And my dad's like, can't starve yourself, not eat like a, like a small salad. And so, you know, sometimes he has to reward me and let me know that like you can eat. So, yeah, I watch um, my weight pretty good. Yeah. Now, um, who are some of uh, some boxers that you look up to? They could either be retired or they could currently be fighting, but who? Who inspires you? Shakur Stevenson, um, my top favorite fighter, you know, uh, especially of right now, you know, because I like I like his fighting style. And also um, Willie Pep, Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard, probably Mike Tyson. You know, my dad would have me watch Mike Tyson. I'd be like, damn, is anybody going to beat him? But, <laughs> you know, of course, people beat him after that because I'm just a kid. And, um I think I think that's about it as my top favorite fighters, but Shakur Stevenson of this generation is my favorite fighter. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, now this is a, a random question, but what my roommate asked me. He was like, "Man, you should ask him this question." Now, has anyone ever, like a, a stranger, like whether it's at school or just out in public, like tested you not knowing that you're a boxer and you have to like restrict yourself because obviously, like you could knock them out if you really wanted to. Have you ever had like any situations where you've had to like control yourself? Um, it's actually, people try to try you all the time, you know, they'll try you over the internet and person, but, um, I'm really a nice guy, humble dude. Yeah. So nobody really presses me like that. Cause like, you know, if you have an issue with me, that's going to be weird. Cause like, what are you mad for? So, but there was this one time I was at LA fitness playing basketball with my, my boys and, um, this dude, you know, he was, I guess he was kind of joking, but his joking was a little too serious. And I took that like, okay, you know, I might have to be on point in a couple <laughs> in a couple of seconds. So um, he was like just talking. And I, I just pointed at my socks. I have a custom pair of socks, like a clear photo of myself with boxing gloves on. So I just pointed at my socks. He's like, oh, you boxed? Oh, I'm just messing with you, dude. And um, <laughs> You didn't want to smoke yeah, after that's, that. Yeah, that's the only time I ever – you know, actually been in, like, not serious altercation, but, like, where I felt like I was almost out to defend myself. But in, in school, I remember uh, I got beat up one time on the bus because I, I got beat up by a fifth grader when I was in, like, second, first grade. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that was also a thing that fueled the fire, made me want to become a fighter, defend myself. Yeah. And no, no one's testing you now on the school bus, I can imagine. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, I did a little bit of research, and I saw that Adrian Broner, it, like, you trained with him. Yeah. Um, is there anything, you, like, you want to allude to about that, like, like things that he's taught you or uh, mm-hmm. anything? Um, well, Adrian Broner, you know, besides the picture that people try to paint of him, he's a very humble, caring, nice guy. And um, he's super, you know, focused and dedicated in that gym. Like, he trains super hard. And, um he, he he would tell me, you know, when I would be sparring, like, you know, everybody's not going to fight clean. You're going to get fighters that hit behind the head, hit you low, you know, throw you around. Um, and you just got to keep your composure, you know. Just know that you're going to win that fight. Keep your mind in the game. And um, everything's going to be good. Um, so I think that was a main part that stood out. Because, like, when I'm in sparring um, and there's, like, a dirty guy, I don't get mad because, like, I don't blame it on myself like that. Like, it's my fault or anything like that. So, yeah. Um, that really changed a part of my view on the professional game because it made me more cautious and made my mind a little more stronger because I know that, 
this person at the end of the fight, it's a fight. Anybody's going to do what they have to do to win or either try to hurt you. You know, sometimes you'll get guys that lock your arm up and try to like jump up with your arm and break it. So, you know, he, he gave me some good advice on that part. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever, uh, ever had to deal with like, um, people trash talking a lot, whether amateur professional and just trying to keep your composure during fights. Is that another thing that you have to Um, battle with? Yeah, but I learned how to trash talk myself, so it don't even matter. Oh, yeah. So at, as a kid, it would get on my nerves when other kids would be like, you know, say stuff. And I'm just this small 70-pound-year-old kid that's like, okay, that was mean. But uh, And I would let it get to me. But now it's like they trash talk. I'm either like smiling, laughing, and I'm, I'm just trash talking back. It happens a lot in my sparring. Yeah. Now, speaking of sparring, I came across a YouTube video a couple of days ago. Uh, you and Devin Haney had a pretty solid sparring match. And, uh, and now it's a fight that you're looking forward to getting, man. I, I really would love to see that fight. Because, I mean, I've been watching him for, uh, for his last couple of fights. And um, yeah. I'll definitely be watching you on May 8th. But I would love to see you guys step in the ring together. It'd be a scrap. Yeah, me and Devin, me and Devin were, were, were cool. You can say we, we're cool now. It's just really, you know, the whole thing. If you watch the thing, it's with his, his dad, really. So. Yeah. Um, that's no beef with me and him. And, you know, he gave me great advice. He's a hardworking, humble guy. And, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a, he's one of my, in the top five of my favorite fighters. So, you know, but I feel like I can't expose too much because my team told me not to continue talking about it. Yeah. But I know off of that sparring, like, he can't beat me. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I mean, and I love to hear that you guys are still friends. Like, there's no actual, like, big beef there. It's just two guys yeah. chasing a dream, and your, your paths are going to cross one day. So yeah, it's just business. Yeah, it's just business. Exactly, man. What is one piece of advice that you could give to my fans listening or watching? Um, for the guys, stay away from the women. <laughs> Continue chasing your dreams. And, nah, that was a joke. But uh, really, it's just... If you if you um, want to do something in life, just go ahead and do it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't because, you know, haters will come. Uh, and just stay focused. Stay on the right path. If you have somebody in your life telling you, you know, you're doing something wrong, listen to that person because that person is the person, you know, who cares about you. Yeah. And um, just stay focused. Keep your mind on what you're doing. And, you know, sky's the limit, and God will give you everything. Yes, sir, man. Well, uh, dude, I, I loved doing this interview. Thank you very much for taking time yeah. for, uh, to speak with me. You can have me back anytime. Yeah, dude, I would definitely love to do an interview after your fight in May. Um, yep. I can't wait for that, man. I mean, I'm pumped to watch that. Uh, who are you fighting? I don't know yet. We didn't get an opponent yet, but as soon as I find out, you'll be the first one to know. My man, thank you. And, uh, yeah, everyone, please go follow Floyd on Instagram at kid underscore Austin one. Is there any other uh, websites or places people can find you at? FloydScofield.com and Floyd Schofield the third if you want to add me on Facebook. And if you want to add me on my gamer tag, you just hit my DM. Yeah, dude. I wish I had a PS4 so we could run something together. But uh, I'm getting that PC soon. No worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we'll be able to rock together 100%. Well, all right, yeah, thank you very much, man. Uh, today was Friday, April 16th, 2021, episode 51. I was joined by undefeated professional boxer Floyd Kidd Austin Schofield. Again, he'll be fighting on May 2021. Make sure to tune in to him. Thank you again, Floyd. Thank you, bro.